Hi, this is Bill Fishbein from La Coffee Trust, a nonprofit that works in Guatemala with small scale coffee producers of Asociación Chajulense. Today is National Coffee Day, September 29th, and we're here with Charlie Fishbein from the Coffee Exchange in Providence, Rhode Island. And we're going to be speaking with Charlie, talking about what's happening at Coffee Exchange and what they're doing for National Coffee Day. But before we get started, Charlie and I go way back. I mean, we go way back because he's my older brother, okay, as you can clearly see on the screen. Um, so my entire life I've spent with Charlie. He had a few, couple years there on his own. I don't know how we managed, but, but we've been together all our lives. We started Coffee Exchange together. It's been an amazing experience, but it's been his show for the last so many years. And we're going to talk to Charlie and find out what it's all about. So, Charlie, welcome to the Coffee Trust and National Coffee Day. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How's the technology going down there at Coffee Exchange? I got a fly around me. It's driving me crazy. The technology, yeah, today is is calling is, is causing us to go crazy too. So okay, well, it, that that's good. Thomas has a swat, fly swatter here. <laughs> He's going to get. Okay, okay. Before we get started. Um, I just, you know, I, as you know, and everyone is going to know soon that the Coffee Trust is working with Coco Miel to try to import honey into um, the United States from our, our, uh, co our coffee producers in Guatemala because they're also honey producers. And, and something happened to you with honey not that long ago, well, a few years ago. It was sort of comical when we were across the street. Do you remember what that was? Let me see, you were carrying a five gallon. Can yes, you just tell I, us I, about that? What, I gotta talk about that? Just now, yeah, just a couple minutes, oh. let us know. Oh, all right, okay, it was uh, it was uh, the dead of uh, winter when we had winter up here. And uh, it was uh, like January, February, and we ran out of honey, which was in these five gallon buckets. Uh, five gallon, five five gallon buckets with a, with a, a pet top out at the bottom and uh so we uh uh we we ran out i had to get more so i went over to the warehouse i got a whole bunch of honey and i brought it back and i poured it into the bucket that had the that had the valve on it so we could keep dispensing it and i had to crimp the top part which i didn't do such a great job and as i'm pushing it over my head into the shelf where we could then access the honey i noticed the honey dripping down my side and my neck and inside my clothes and and in and all the way down <laughs> so so you had five gallons of honey poured all over you from head to toe oh uh, yeah some of the honey actually stayed in the in the bucket but enough okay. so that it was so the only way i could okay. get home was to throw on a, a garbage liner or six and okay. uh and 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 try and get home without causing honey to be all over the house. Okay, okay. The next time you tell the story, don't say that any honey was left in the bucket. Just let it all go on top of you. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Just to get started, um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but um, we're 35 years old. Well, they know it in Providence, yeah. Coffee Exchange is 35 years old. Been around for 35 years when we started or when when you when we started years ago it was we were alone it was nobody there okay today providence is is a coffee place on every corner okay okay so what is it about coffee exchange that people keep coming back despite all the other places in town yeah well coffee is i mean providence is a coffee town uh, and with us it's been uh pretty much the with all of the longevity of 35 years, we were able to create that, that atmosphere where we become a community center. Uh, we have music playing all the time. The customers come in, we're always having crowds. The customers provide that, that, that entertainment for all the other customers. And we become a destination uh, mainly because of the, 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 the atmospherics that, that are created by the customers themselves. And the music and the and the community centeredness of the of of the whole place, really cool. Yeah. You, you know, as you're as you're describing that, it's I mean, it's scientifically, it would be something like fusion or fission, <laughs> because yeah. the customer is coming and it's the customers themselves that actually cr help create the atmosphere. Pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, 
Okay, well, then uh, let me move on. Um, there must have been, there must be some, some guiding principles that you've kind of honored over the years. You've been running Coffee Exchange pretty much on your own for at least the last 25 years. Um, and so, um, I mean, what, what are those guiding principles that have kept you focused, kept you um, on track so that everything keeps coming out as it does? Mainly, it's, I think, it's just a, uh, a, a focus on the customer experience. It's when, when new employees come to work here, we make sure that they understand that we're in the, in the business of making customers, not sales. And that, that process is something that becomes uh, part it's one of o'clock because of who we are. Um, uh, there's, there's, there's also the fact that, that, that we are we are uh, concerned with freshness and taste, uh, and that and that the the uh, the, uh, the the combination of the, the the really great tasting coffee it's roasted right here on 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 the pre on the premises combined with again with that community atmosphere that we have here all day long it just it just it it works that that way it's a uh, it, it, it's the, the focus on the customer ex, experience, but it's also the making sure that that that, that experience is, is, is quality and flavorful and fresh all all day long. That's that's great. Now I know that you do the coffee ordering for the most part, um, and um, but um, your master roaster do, does he have any? Uh, Real good qualifications to be a coffee roaster and cupper. One of the, one, one of the few roasters in the country that got that got his cue, uh, okay. you know, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and he's he's uh, uh, he's one of the most res respected roasters in the country. Uh, so we're yeah we're we're very glad to have him, and, right. and he he actually manages to roast uh, to roast according to how this particular batch of coffee is going to taste, either an espresso or a brute, a brute factory. Uh, uh, he, 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 he does a great job keeping, I mean, even uh, coffee can be can be a month old and it'll be roasted roast a certain way. It can be six months old and it could be roasted a certain way. And Ben is the kind of guy that can actually uh, uh, create those nuances and train other people to, to manage it appropriately as, wow. as, as well. That, that's great. You know, a, a short while ago, there was an article in the Boston Magazine about um, coffee in New England, or um, the, the yeah, we were very fortunate. Yeah, they, they they did a number on places to go in New England for for uh, for the summer, and uh, of all of all the places they went to get caffeinated in 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 New England, coffee exchange got to be number one. And so you know, it wasn't long after that article came out, I was getting calls left and right from people wanting us to open up in Kendall Square and and uh, and and a, and a few other places. But it's like you know, so it's great for our reputation. Uh, but we already had a number of customers from, from Boston already. So it's oh, cool. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, let me shift gears a little bit and, and ask you about uh, Coffee's Changes commitment to coffee producers. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, we're a small single store roaster and cafe, and so uh, because we're small, we have we have to concentrate our 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 our, our efforts to help and uh, help uh, coffee producers. Uh, and so we we picked uh, Valencia Coffee. Uh, producers as 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 the, the recipients of where where not not only coffee chains but our customers can focus their 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 efforts. Uh, we we uh, 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 it, it's. I mean uh, on on um, on on. Um, I mean the the the. The roast, the producer that you're supporting, the Chaho Lenze. Well, okay. yeah, actually, well, cus customers know uh, when they uh, our our customers know that when they're buying Chaho Lenze coffee or the or the coco miel chocolate or the soon to be the honey and the textiles that we get from Hands of Guatemala, 
uh, the, the, all these, all these purchases go to help the coffee farmers, uh, and, and, and other, and, uh, and, uh, other farmers in Guatemala. They, uh, and it did, uh, at the same time, we have, we have fundraisers, uh, we have at least two fundraisers every year. This, uh, this is one, uh, the, a national coffee day where we, where we, we, we have 50% off, uh, coffee, 50% off textiles, 50% off the, uh, uh, the chocolates. We, but we also have a raffle going on. We're raffling off one prize of over $300 worth of, of, uh, of, of domestic coffee products, Chemex coffee maker, escrow presses, uh, Hario grinders, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then that, that's going on today, but we, we, we also have on a yearly basis, our New Year's Day fundraiser, where we, uh, where, where all of our vendors donate the food and dairy that we use for that day. The employees that work here that day donate all, all their time. The customers actually donate the, 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 the items to be, to be uh, auctioned off in the silent auction. And it's on that day, in the last several years, we've been raise, able to raise over between eight and ten thousand uh, dollars for for uh, for the coffee crust, but and and for the thousand say coffee growers. And and uh, but this is this, this, in, in on New Year's Day, this town is a fleet. The coffee has changed rock, and we've got uh, it, and we there's a, there's a community atmosphere here and a, and a, 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 an exuberance that is. is un- so and let me ask you something let me ask you something um on um uh when that it's such a bit such a busy day um that um what's the in the atmosphere in the in coffee exchange is amazing it, do you think does that strengthen your customer loyalty in any way it 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 just keeps yeah it, yeah Everything contributes. Everything for today contributes to tomorrow. So that, so that as you know, that as we, as we have that much energy happening on New Year's Day, so we also that that energy continues into the following week and into the following month. And so that, so that th- th- there's a constant uh, uh, recognition that we're all in this together. And, and and that part of the of the of the experience here at Coffee Change is uh, is is wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, we're all in this together. I think that the Coffee Trust is going to use that next year as some sort of a mantra because honestly, it's it's true at Coffee Exchange, and um, uh, I like to really um, magnify that that uh, mantra if possible. So yeah. it's really it is fantastic. We have a few people now who are uh, participating um, with uh, Coffee Exchange on New Year's Day, doing the same thing, donating the entire day's proceeds to the Coffee Trust because ev- all the vendors and employees and customers are contributing their goods. So it's pretty remarkable. Coffee Exchange, by the way, is one of the top three contributors to um, uh, the Coffee Trust every single year. So that's something to be pretty pretty proud of. So yeah. just before I, 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 I say, Saludos. Um, uh, what, what are you all doing for um, uh, New, uh, National Coffee Day? What specials are you running again? Okay, it was 50% off uh, all, all Cavalente coffees, 50% off all uh, Cavalente uh, Coco Miel uh, uh, chocolate bars, 50%, uh, 50% off the Guatemalan textiles, and we have a raffle going on. Uh, and we'll have the drawing at 5 o'clock. Uh, with, where we have a little over three hundred dollars worth of, uh, of domestic coffee products. Wow, well, that's that, really cool. Okay, that's pretty amazing. Um, well, okay, uh, nice chatting with you. I know we do this several times a week anyway, but uh, nice doing this on a more formal basis. And um, yeah. I'm looking forward to my next trip back to Providence, where uh, I can have a cup of coffee, coffee exchange. I look forward okay. to it. And by the way, um, before you go, for all those who are listening, if you'd like to join Charlie uh, in his support for um, the Coffee Trust, uh, please please feel free to uh, go to www.thecoffeetrust.org and make a contribution. We appreciate anything, any contribution. Oh, we are deeply appreciative of your support. And because we're all in it together, it makes a whole lot of difference. Thanks so much. Thanks, Charlie. We'll be in touch. Thanks, thanks, Phil. Take care. Okay.